Hey, welcome back. Hope you had a great Christmas. We're going to continue here on Steam Culture with our steamship theme. Now, we're going to move out of the rivers and the canals with the paddle wheels onto the wide open ocean. So, the first steamship credited with going transatlantic was the SS Savannah. Now, the SS Savannah did have a paddle wheel mounted on the side, so it was called a side wheeler. Also had a steam engine and a boiler located right in there. Now, as you can see from this picture, some unique design features. One, the paddle wheel actually came up out of the water because the Savannah would use the boiler and the, and the paddle wheel and the steam engine to get out to sea, then she would go under sail. So what happens is the paddle wheel in the water creates a lot of drag that the sails had to overcome. So they would hoist it out of the water, mount it on the side. You also see that the stack for the boilers had to be turned sideways so that it didn't send hot ash and all that stuff into the uh, sails. All right, so the next big jump from there was a long distance commercial steamship. Now really before 1866, there weren't any steamships that would make that long trade route from, um, from the United States or Britain to the Far East where there was a lot of tea and things that had to be moved in commerce because no ship could carry that much coal and cargo. Um, so there was a big problem. Now, another problem was this, that they didn't have the fuel efficiency to make the trip. What do I mean by that? The British Board of Trade, I have that right, the British Board of Trade said, hey, look, if you're on a ship, you can't operate a boiler above 25 PSI, where most land boilers were operating around 60 or 70 or 80 PSI. So a gentleman by the name of Albert Holt, you see a picture of him here, he invented a compound steam engine. All right, so Holt's compound steam engine could produce 300 horsepower, but here's where the magic come in. See, they needed fuel efficiency. So, in order to do that, he convinced the British Board of Trade to allow him to operate at 60 PSI, which is three times what they were operating at. More steam power, more energy per pound of coal used. So now they could travel 8,500 miles before having to reload on coal, which really opened up that shipping route. So that was groundbreaking. So just like everything else, like a plane and an automobile, it went from practicality to luxury. So from large commercial steamships, we ended up with these steam-bound ocean liners. Running water, electricity allowed for first-class cabins, ballrooms, uh, shows, all the kinds of things that you can see here in these pictures, which is also a great lead-in because next week we're going to feature one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic steamship ever, the Titanic. So I hope you're here for that episode. Until then, use your time wisely. Go out on social media and find us because we have great content for you. Should keep you interested until next week. Hey, and by the way, it's going to be New Year's next week. So Happy New Year's in advance. I'll see you then on Steam Culture. Take care.